politically. So, for example, if you look at the U.S. Congress, there actually is an over-representation of Lebanese American. There are quite a few Lebanese American uh, in the U.S. Congress, uh, whereas we see less, you know, Egyptian Americans taking political, uh, you know, going more into the political track. But I think that's kind of a, a product of us being here longer and, you know, beginning to value that kind of engagement. Um, but in the NGO sector, you see a very, very diverse mix from all over. Um, you know, to, to the, the extent to which they work together and try to, you know, I, I think we still have to, as, as we've discussed kind of informally, we still have, have to work on that. And I think that's more of an issue with our own culture and how we communicate and work together with one another. And I think there's a lot more to do on that level, but I think it's a process. Um, going back to the NGO trial, and specifically democracy organizations, because I know that that's probably what you've heard a lot more about in the news. I um, would be very interested to know your experience at NED. Yeah, my experience. And what is NED, and because most people don't yeah. know what's NED, and what they really do. So NED is an organization that was founded about 20, or now I think about 30 years ago. It's a congressionally funded organization, but it is independent because there is an independent board that makes their funding and policy decisions. So there's, in the, the entire time that I've been there, there's never been any kind of uh, intervention or direction from any kind of governmental body. <coughs> the independent board represents academics, very big names, like you know, prominent people like Francis Fukuyama or Larry, you know, Larry Diamond. I don't think was on the board, or people like Michelle Dunn. You know, so it's it's a very prominent board that is usually comprised of independent academics, uh, people that represent um, the different areas of civil society that Ned works on. So people that represent. Um, labor, for example, private sector, so people from business association or, 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 or labor background. But the money is a governmental money. The money is, congress it, it is congressionally funded. But there is no governmental intervention in how that money is directed. And, um, and, and you know, the NED, because it is congressionally funded, it's a, and you'll find this with a lot of NGOs, they are very transparent. American NGOs are very transparent. You can go on their website, you can see who's on their board, you can look at their annual reports to see how much money they have, where it was spent. For the NED, you can even go country by country and look at the description of each grant that they give in each country. Um, obviously, in some cases, sorry, the National Endowment for Democracy. Obviously, because of, in countries where there's a crackdown on civil society, they're sometimes more careful about listing specific organizations. Like in Egypt in the past, they would list every organization, but after the NGO crackdown for the safety of the organizations, they just have the descriptions of the projects and not the names of each of the organizations. Um, but I'll, you know, that's something that they don't like, you know, people want to be transparent. It's easier for me to say, you know, this is what I'm doing, here's, but when it comes to the safety of people, you just have to be more more careful. To your knowledge, during those years, I don't yeah. know how many years you were there, was there any single Egyptian organization applying or interacting with the NET? There were quite, yeah, uh, the NET supported a number of Egyptian organizations, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they're all listed on the website. Like you'll see each project in each amount. But the NED focuses on small grants. So on average, the grant in Egypt was about twenty thousand dollars for a year. And if you think about that, if if you if you really, I mean, yes, that's a lot of money for Egypt. But if you think about it, like that is you know rent, staff salaries, basic. So it's not a, it's not a big amount of money. And I think overall for Egypt, when I was there, you know, the the range of the budget was one to two million dollars a year. So it's it's not the biggest donor. But none of them was political. All of them. So no. Well, no, NED does focus on democracy assistance. So, but what does that mean? Because it's a very loaded term. It doesn't mean partisan activity. So they weren't supporting one group over the other. What they were supporting is democratic institutions and processes. And what does that mean? It, we all, I think unfortunately in Egypt, the term democracy is so loaded and has been so tainted that when you break it down for people, it makes a lot more sense and we just use that term. So I, I generally don't even like to use that term you know, when I'm talking to, to Egyptians because it, you, know, you really need to break it down. So within that, within that category, the types of programs that are supported by groups like the NED are programs that support accountability and transparency. So for example, one program that was a fantastic program that I think they supported was um, to an organization that was uh, monitoring the annual budget. You know, <coughs> this is not a partisan activity. It's not a political party activity. But you know, there is a state budget. So the idea is, okay, let's match the the budget with, you know, what you know what what has actually been spent. How does this relate to the Egyptian development plan? You know, is is the money being allocated in a way that's representative of the needs of 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 
society. So that's one example of a program in accountability and transparency. Another area that they worked on was freedom of information and free expression. So supporting independent media. Uh, you know, Egypt up until 2003 it was very much dominated by state media. But since 2003, you start seeing the emergence of independent newspaper, you start seeing the emergence of blogs and online newspapers and radios. So for example, a program that was supported in that area was uh, an online radio for, for youth that provided, you know, online radio had been for the most part under the radar for a long time. So it provided an independent space for young people, one, to practice journalism, which is very important because as you know, the education system in Egypt, if you're studying media in Egypt, you don't necessarily have an opportunity to practice. Within American education system, experiential learning is a key component. So having you know, a youth-led organization that has an online radio that brings in youth to practice how do you write a story, how do you produce, how do you interview people, it has two, two benefits. One, training young people in, in terms of how to be effective journalists, and the other is to, pro to provide an outlet for free well, expression. The flying NGO has to be an American and registered? No. So again, it depends, and we're speaking just about, specifically about the NED. So it's, um, for NED, they focused on um, local organizations. That was their area of focus. So it supported local Egyptian NGOs. Oh, okay. Local yeah. in the in other Egypt. countries. Yeah, and NED works around the world. So it's not working just in Egypt. Um, and it's been working around the world for 25 years. And it's been working in Egypt far longer than you know, 2011. Did NED ever criticize the state control of media in Egypt? So NED is not an advocacy other. organization. So they don't do that. Um, it's it's, it's a, well, each, each organization has a scope and a mandate, and that's something that's very important. And I, I would encourage also, like this is, frankly, it's a problem with a lot of organizations where they want to do everything in the sun. Um, so you have, as an organization, you have to have a very specific scope so you can be effective in that area. So that particular organization was a grant-making organization that supported civil society development. But you have groups like Freedom House was an advocacy organization. That's what they do. They also have, they do take positions, they issue statements, they do their annual reports criticizing. You have Human Rights Watch, you have Amnesty International, you have um, the Center to Protect Journalists. All of those organizations do that. So you have to, you know, each organization Are they funded has to do by that. Um, it, uh, it depends, like, yeah. on where and who. So okay. for Egypt, none of those were, but they do have other sources of funding. Um, so we were talking about the different components of democracy assistance within that, within that kind of umbrella. So we talked about uh, accountability and transparency, free expression, um, uh, freedom of association, working on things like labor rights or um, you know, independent NGOs. In Egypt, this is really a problem because the NGOs are, are under very, very tight control. So groups that were uh, groups that were working on you know training um, NGOs to understand the law to understand their their rights and, and how to register something like that or groups that were monitoring violations against um, freedom of association. Another big component, obviously, is human rights. So groups that are mo monitoring uh, human rights violations and documenting human rights violations. Uh, so that's those are the types of programs that were supported by that particular organization. Again, that's one of many. There are. There are hundreds of donor organizations working in Egypt, and that is a very, very small one. USA provided much more funding. They provided bigger grants. They had a bigger scope. They do both development and democracy work. You had European donors that were working on a number of different ones. You have Gulf donors that were supplying, and their funding is a lot less transparent. I mean, when you look at USAID, State Department, or any kind of the American organizations, anybody has a right to FOIA, these organizations. You all are familiar with FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act. Either us as American citizens or even Egyptian citizens have a right to request information about these organizations and their activities. So the whole premise of this support is that it needs to be uh, uh, transparent. One more thing I'll add about that is it's also demand driven. So these organizations, they don't advertise generally, they don't, they have an open call. If, if there's a demand, people apply, it's reviewed by a committee, and if it, it, if it matches the scope of the organization, they'll be considered. So it's not something where people are going and recruiting and like finding somebody and like telling them you you do this it's, that's just not how it works i think he had a question first uh, okay. so just, uh, the question is do you physically have to be existing or like in any other place like if you're functioning like this way it really depends you, okay if you are if you have to be in a country like in Asia, yeah you have to get the permission to be there right it re so it there's I'm a number of different to things the question because oh, okay. if it's you have to be there is like you have to get an authorization from the government, yeah. which is all corrupted. Yeah. Right? 
how would you function? And, and first, how do you get the permission, and how do you function? You feel like you're doing something fair.